class so yeah abhishek you can start over yeah. to you thank you so much sir it just provided that i i'm able to answer all of those whichever i can't i will try my best to get back uh, to the class on that we have tomorrow session as well so we have a we have a window in that sense in case i'm not able to answer any all right so just i'll just uh, sharing my screen i'll start Uh, please do let me know if you see my screen in in I'm just doing Is it is it visible my screen Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. All right. So, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, it shows that sharing is paused. Uh, I'm I'm just switching my screen. Just let me know if uh, the next slide is visible now. No sir. Ah, got it. No. Got it. Got it. Now should be right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. All right. Perfect. <coughs> All right. So okay, starting again. uh thank you so much uh, safal sir for having me here today tonight and uh, and thank you everyone for joining in i see that uh, around uh, 22 25 of you have joined um all right so today uh, the agenda would be that uh, so we have two classes as uh, i was told by uh, uh, professor safal sir <clears throat> that we have two sessions to cover something uh, really good and i uh, truly believe uh, that this is something that would uh, uh add some knowledge to your to whatever you already have the kind of knowledge you already have the kind of experience you already have out of your uh, years of experience in the industry and uh, and particularly uh, we will be talking about uh, uh understanding product market fit which the topic is uh, the main topic is for the sessions uh and also something uh, that uh, is very relevant and uh, this is uh, something i found out uh, myself quite later on as compared to when uh, since since the time i've been into startups and entrepreneurship and and in fact uh, the, the the lecture that uh, professor safal sir had uh, attended that even that did not have zeitgeist fit but i believe that uh, pzf is something uh, very important and and we'll see why it's it's not directly something you can do about it is totally out of your hands like product market fit is still kind of in your hands uh, to some extent Uh, to some extent not we'll see uh, as you can see the beautiful diagram uh, on the right uh, it's it's not really in your hand uh, 100% and on and on top of it product zeitgeist fit is uh, something completely not in your hand but again uh, definitely uh, you can do something uh, if you have that fit and uh, after that comes product market fit so technically first is zeitgeist fit and then market fit but uh, we'll we'll but product market fit since it is somewhat in your hand we will be taking a look at pmf first and uh, mostly the lecture would be uh, uh, based on uh, pmf only and uh, and and also i'll somewhat try to see and and i'm pretty much sure that uh, a lot of uh, people here are uh, a lot of you here may have already worked at uh, scale i don't know uh, as far as i've heard i'm not sure whether that has been a web based product uh to be to, uh, to be honest but uh if not then i think this will be very very useful if you're planning to get a uh, planning of getting into uh something uh, like uh, some, some building some web based products for some b2b uh, or b2c uh markets and and if it's some something else completely something uh, else like manufacturing or other uh, pharmacy and other areas uh maybe something you'll you'll in the interactiveness you'll add add to the discussion uh but i'll try to cover Even so Yeah. Uh I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I'm very sorry to interrupt. Please can you please start the recording of the session? Oh, I uh, okay. I think this is something that uh, Pulkit sir needs to do or can I do it? Pulkit, Pulkit are you there? Pulkit aap recording kar do please. Ha, mere paas option nahi actually. Pulkit? 
जस्ट मिनट सर थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच yeah i i support that it would be great if i can also get this recording later okay there's a chat so uh, i think there's a chat okay can this session be recorded and also i uh, i will i will prefer not looking into the chat uh, uh, but in between uh, i'll see that if there are any specific questions and uh, okay i see that the recording has started uh, am i good to go uh, pulkit sir Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Oh, all right. Thanks a lot. All right. So I will uh, prefer not to look at the chat because last time I tried doing this, uh, it 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 was a havoc and uh, people were frustrated that why is he uh, like deviating so much. So I'll I'll do it in 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 intervals. Uh, all right. So where was I? <clears throat> yeah so uh, so that is that is what i'm trying to accomplish here and uh, uh, and we know that since since all of this covid has started we have uh, we are, i i have been personally hearing a, a term uh, very frequently which is called a uh, fidgeter uh, it's it's spelled as uh, p h y and then uh, g i t a l it's like a combination of physical and digital uh, i am not researched into it i don't know what it exactly means but it it is pretty much that uh, now the world has uh, the, the even the thin line of difference that was there uh, or, or the or the uh, broad line of difference that was there between physical and digital uh, i think these last few months have uh, reduced it uh, to a very thin line and uh, uh, so on so i think this then becomes and and this class setup uh, then becomes all the more important uh, for us to discuss something like pmf and uh, we can cover it in in terms of web based products all right uh, <clears throat> starting with it so that's what my purpose is for uh, today and tomorrow combined so uh, what i'll try to cover is uh, first of all today's lecture i'll try to help add to your knowledge of the of the entire nitty gritty of uh, pmf which you already might be having uh, to some extent and uh, and and what strategies may work at scale to be honest i have i have uh, been a part of b2b products i've led b2b products where uh, i have not achieved a lot of skill but uh, there the definition of scale is pretty different and uh, there have been uh, like two startups which so this is my third startup that i'm doing right now so uh, there have been two startups which i have uh, uh, somewhat i can say that i have failed uh, to scale and uh, and uh, <clears throat> so that is some experience i can share and uh, apart from that uh, policy bazaar is a place where i was working and i was leading their service product entirely uh, i was the product owner for that and that is somewhere i i have worked at uh, scale so let's see what what we can achieve here and also uh, we'll see most importantly how to drive growth by achieving uh, product market fit early on and especially uh, if you're a if you're a startup founder if you're an entrepreneur <clears throat> it becomes you most probably uh, would be uh, someone who has maybe left your job and and started uh, a company maybe uh, you have started your company while you're on your job but again if you're earning an x amount of salary uh, uh, there's already so many uh, expenses in your day to day life then you again start a startup at the same time it just ha you just have nothing left right so uh, if you don't achieve product market fit early on the only thing that you will do is ultimately burn out of your money and that is going to happen very fast right uh, I, i saw it in my case as well where i i actually started the startup and while i was also working at policy bazaar that's how it works uh, can't help it right but uh, nothing of the salary was was remaining at the end of the day so if you achieve pmf early on that's when your conversions start happening more conversions more revenue something i don't uh, have to tell uh, in front of this class so so that is that is where achieving pmf early on becomes very important so we'll see that how we can drive growth or maybe share some ideas on that front okay before we start just we'll take a couple of minutes to uh, just share what i've been doing uh, currently i am the co-founder of uh, a startup called world we are an agri fintech and we are india's first uh, uh, blockchain based uh, agri lending uh, blockchain platform uh, we, and we are helping farmers and banks basically uh, banks by reducing frauds for them in warehouse receipt financing and farmers by uh, helping them increase their income up to 40% uh, and we are doing that by helping them not sell their produce under distress uh, when specifically the the price is at the bottom lowest and they get nothing out of out of their produce that is what we are doing we are the first live implementation on maharashtra blockchain sandbox uh, and maharashtra blockchain sandbox happens to be the first such sandbox in the country so we automatically become the first live implementation in the country and uh, apart from that we are in 1250 warehouses in maharashtra right now as of today 
and uh, we have Indus Indian Bank, Yes Bank, and and uh, Maharashtra State Cooperative Bank uh, as as partners. Indus Indian about to close, uh, so this is where the startup is right now. And uh, so and okay. And apart from that, I've been a product owner, as I just said, of my account, which is a service product for PolicyBazaar.com. It received approximately more than six and a half lakh monthly customers. So whichever journey in Policy Bazaar, everyone must be knowing about Policy Bazaar. So whichever journey you choose to buy a, an insurance product, for support you have to come to my product. So so that is where the uh, entire uh, traffic accumulated at at my end. So uh, and and apart from that, my other field is uh, sector is blockchain because we are a blockchain based platform. So I'm an author in blockchain. I'm a speaker in blockchain. So uh, I, I have a stronger hold towards blockchain. All right, uh, going ahead. <clears throat> so let's take a look at uh, the bird's eye view before we start. And this is simple. You can see just a couple of lines. Uh, what I've noticed is that uh, what people think that uh, product market fit or building an MVP that matches a product uh, fitment for a particular market, what, it, what people think it is is that just build an MVP with the bare minimum uh, features, uh, like, like a couple of features or three to four features, which solve, address a problem uh, that exists in a market. So just pay attention that it's just what this couple, these couple of lines are saying is that uh, it's so the features, the combination of couple of uh, features are just solving a need that is existing in a market. Fair enough. That is what an MVP is for and that is what you are building a product for, right? Without the need, you won't be building a product. However, what product market fit actually is, it's the fitment. It's about the fitment of the product and the market, which means that it's being in a good market with a product in hand that can satisfy the market, not just solve one aspect of the problems, of the numerous problems that uh, the market might be, the people in that, that market segment might be facing. It's about satisfying. And we'll see a couple of examples throughout this class. And, and uh, we'll try to understand that what kind of strategies and methods have people used, have big companies, uh, small and big, both kinds of companies used. Uh, again, typically this presentation would be a, a bit web focused because that's what my experience has been. Uh, but again, with that fire physical concept, I think that is important. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, is, is, is there a problem? Someone saying anything? Uh, okay, I think someone is unmuted. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so if, if, if there's a problem, so okay, I believe that it might happen that I speak, uh, I've, I've gotten this feedback previously that I might speak very fast, uh, and especially with someone, some, some, some slow connection at any end, it would become problematic. If that is the case, please unmute yourself and let me know. I'll just uh, slow it down. All right, so <clears throat> moving ahead. Uh, yeah, so that, that what exactly uh, product market fit means, and it has been said by Mark Andreessen, I, I, I believe that a lot of you would be knowing Mark Anderson. He's, 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 a, he's a really big guy uh, in tech uh, now. He was, he was behind uh, the Netscape Navigator, the first ever browser to exist. And uh, he's, he runs a venture capital called A16Z and, uh, uh, for, for Anderson Horowitz. And uh, uh, so he, is, he, has, he has popularized product market fit a lot. Uh, people sometimes believe that he was the one who coined the term, but it was someone else. Uh, so this has been said by Mark Anderson. All right, uh, going ahead. Let's start something, something by reading something uh, very good, right? So Michael Siebel, as you can read on screen, Michael Siebel says, uh, Michael Siebel is the CEO of Y Combinator. Y Combinator, again, uh, one of the leading uh, incubators uh, for startups uh, in, in the world. So Y Combinator, and many famous names have come out of Y Combinator. So uh, most founders believe that they have achieved, this is very important. I mean, I found this earlier today on the internet and just put a slide on it. Most founders believe that they have achieved PMF just because, usually it is just because it, it happens to be intellectually convenient. This is a very deep sentence uh, said by Michael, uh, Michael Siebel. Most of the founders, see the explanation you, you can read. It's because everyone, every founder, every other founder wants to focus on the more shinier parts uh, of, of building a company, setting up a company, which is, which is hiring great people, going on a hiring spree, setting up an office, uh, setting up HR, culture, uh, marketing, finance, spending a lot of budget on Facebook marketing, Google marketing, LinkedIn marketing, and then, and then spending a lot of social activities and all of that things, right? 
that is that is that is usually covered and every every entrepreneur anyone who has been an entrepreneur previously would uh, concur uh, with this uh, statement aptly that uh, yes the shinier parts are actually uh, doing all of those things that a founder can do but before you do that before you start the process of building your company uh, via these processes it's important to solve the problem first that is that has to be done first not later you solve the problem first then you go ahead and build a company around it right so that is why but founders typically uh, what what michael siebel says and you can anyone can notice <coughs> founders typically have uh, in the past uh, founders typically have uh, 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 missed this point uh, very very like drastically and uh, they have usually thought that they have achieved pmf uh, by some metrics maybe some metrics that their marketing team has uh, has come up with maybe some metrics that uh, they just believe that okay 100 different people have come to my platform within the first month i must have achieved pmf if that is a, and and that usually founders do because it is really intellectually convenient you can understand that okay it's better to think uh, that that we have achieved it uh, rather than really go into solving that problem however uh, so that is that is one one very important aspect of product market fit and how founders relate to pmf right and uh, <clears throat> Uh, however, uh, surprisingly and quite interestingly, it is it is not it is not mandatory that unless you are you have achieved PMF, it is not mandatory that you cannot uh, go with. Uh, it, it's not mandatory that you cannot uh, earn anything, earn any revenue, you cannot generate any revenue, or you cannot build your company. It's not mandatory. An example is Michael's uh, own Justin TV or Twitch. Uh, most of uh, most of you have heard, must have heard. Um, Justin.tv had itself uh, earned dollar one million in profit even before they had reached a stage of product market fit. And of course, Michael, when he's knowing so much about PMF, he knew when, and, and at least later he could connect all the dots <clears throat> and he could see that uh, they reached product market fit way later. And before that, a lot of the story had happened. I mean, they had reached one million dollars in profit someone any founder uh, reaching this position would actually believe that uh, they have achieved product market fit but it is not necessary that you that that one sign of not achieving product market fit is that you're not earning anything or you do not have users there's a difference maybe the levels of uh, traction would be fairly fairly different right but it does not mean that you do not get any kind of traction without pmf that's a very subjective case even though later in this presentation we'll be seeing examples where uh, we'll be we'll be taking a look at uh, uh, we'll we'll be seeing some some company examples where uh, they have uh, achieved product market fit early on pretty much uh, and some have also uh, achieved PMF uh, quite later but uh, it it has been it has been also we'll be seeing importantly we'll be seeing that uh, there's a formula there's a set formula for calculating PMF however. Even before we'll take a look at that, I would myself like to state that uh, this is a very subjective matter. It's not a clear line of difference. It's all about you. You are running a manufacturing startup. I might be running a, <coughs> excuse me, I might be running a, a, a web-based uh, platform. We are completely two different sectors. It cannot happen, even though there is a formula for PMF, it cannot happen that uh, uh, it cannot happen that uh, uh, we both are, uh, are are just taking care of the same formula, fitting our models into the same formula and finding PMF. I pretty much believe that uh, you can differ with the formula. And we'll see a case study. We'll see a case study where uh, they had not reached uh, the formula, what, what the formula specifies, but they, they understood that they have achieved product market fit. <coughs> All right, going ahead. So three very important legs of this product market fit stool uh, are, are people, market, and innovative product, the, the, the presence of uh, an innovative product. So how? Uh, I think, I think uh, a lot of you would, would uh, have much more experience to share than I would on this slide that <clears throat> good people have the tendency to build great products. And it's, it's evident, it's evident with uh, everything we see around us, right? Bad people bad, make bad products, good people make good teams make good products, right? So, and, and it is very important to get the right set of people early on, right? Or whenever it is that you're hiring, but you have to get the hire right. Even one single, and, and we have so many, so many uh, people have explained it in so many different ways. <clears throat> Even one single good or bad hire can make or break your company's product reaching a market fit. The, the strategies where, by which your product will reach your market fit, because those are the people who will be building that product. If they are wrong, if they are incorrectly placed, <clears throat> 
you can very well understand that uh, the PMF will be reached later, the product will reach uh, to that stage uh, further later, right? Uh, so an example I put here is, is this, this logo is of uh, Notion. Notion is a task management uh, database and uh, 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 a lot of things are packed into Notion. It's that kind of software and uh, it's a very small team that, that is behind Notion, uh, that is running Notion. But Notion has already reached a valuation of over a billion dollars. It's already a unicorn. Uh, so clearly, it's, uh, it's a very good team at work who have built a unicorn in a very short amount of time. Like Policy Bazaar became a unicorn after I think seven, eight years or nine years, right? Uh, Notion became, has become a unicorn way faster than that. Uh, Zomato also I think became a unicorn way later, seven, eight years, I guess. So, uh, however, so, so that's, that's, that's what a good team means. So, and Notion does not need to control delivery or sales in such a manner like Policy Bazaar does. Notion is a simple product. It just needs to do marketing, set the marketing right and mainly it needs to reach a position where it can map its products and its features uh, to the to a particular customer segment more on that later so i've given an example of notion because uh, it's a great team as i said uh, who have built notion and have uh, scaled it heavily the market uh, regarding the market uh, okay so i'll ju just just pause before going into the uh, next uh, uh, example is there a question uh, till now any questions let me see the chat Okay, there are no questions. If there are, please do uh, put it put it on the chat, and uh, of course, uh, I'll take it up again in the next interval. <clears throat> so going ahead, um, and so for for the market to be in place, so uh, what we need is uh, an accepting market, which is very important to have a future for the product that you're building. And why I mentioned is especially if your product runs vertically. If you're building a B2B product, for example, which, which, which goes vertical as compared to, which, which scales vertically as compared to scaling horizontally, it is all the more important. So which, which would mean that you're, you're building a niche oriented product. And in that case, it would, very, it would be very important that uh, uh, you, you are absolutely uh, consistent and confirmed about mapping your features with your, with your, with your uh, segment, with your market segment, expected market segment. So I put an example here, it's unlike WhatsApp. WhatsApp, every one of us have used. It has scaled vertically. It, it has scaled horizontally, completely, right? Uh, WhatsApp is not, not a vertical organization. It does not have to go deeper to solve problems of a particular sector. It is solving the same problem across multitudes of sector. It's, it's, it's working for every, every other person, right? So it's, it's unlike WhatsApp. If you're not building something like WhatsApp, like we are working on, on a platform to provide loans right now, it will not suit you, but it will suit a farmer, right? So we have to go deeper and deeper and we have to make sure we scale vertically and then whichever problem we have to map that, whichever problems that a farmer or a trader or, or, or an agent or, or all these kinds of uh, customer uh, segments face, we answer them all, right? And we, we, we fit our product and features based on that, right? So uh, is there a problem? Uh, someone is unmuted. Uh, all right, okay. So, so that's that's what what essentially a niche-oriented product would be, and then product market fit becomes all the more important because it's not just marketing that is going to help you scale. It has to be product market fit only that is will help you scale, and 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 it should be very clear because uh, you just cannot scale a, a vertically uh, scaling product uh, by just marketing without having users actually use it, and and especially in the case of B two B, without uh, actually having some good number of customers who have who can vouch for you, right? So that is very important market and we'll, the very next slide we'll see what a great market means and it's a very good summary of, of what market and the product market fit relate. And next in an innovative product, of course, without an innovative product which can fulfill the demands of the market segment that you're targeting, it, is, it has no meaning to reach, uh, trying to reach a product market fit. So uh, until you do that, everything else will become a failure. Company building, anything else will be a failure. So. Uh, all right, so I, I'll just read it out. So the product might seem to come last because that's what's built last. And here also on the slide I've mentioned it last because of course you strategize first before driving your tech team uh, right into the code, right? But that is a result of all of those strategies that you've built based on the market segment that you've chosen, right? If I'm not wrong. 
so uh, and, and and that is why it becomes the most important part of the entire cycle because it's, it comes last so it has the uh, benefit of having all of those qualities from the strategies that you've built right so an example would be uh, this 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 logo can 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 someone i think this is very easy can someone just write in the chat which logo is this uh, just to see that if my screen is still visible can someone please use the chat uh, to write uh, what this logo is which company is this i mean it's, it's too easy i shouldn't have asked this I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, great. So this was, and, and I think this was uh, some time back that Uber used this logo. Now they have changed it further. Again, they have got back the characters Uber. Uh, but <coughs> uh, typically, Uber is a very good example because you are taking out Uber because they have solved a very important problem. I don't know how many people are doing it now since the last five, six months. I have not taken an Uber since the last six months, maybe. Uh, but uh, where Uber reached, and definitely it failed the IPO a bit, and all of that happened. But still, it's the, the valuation that it has currently, because it is solving <clears throat> all the problems that uh, that are that are that are emanating from your everyday lives, and the problem is that you have to travel. Again, uh, so th so that is what Uber solved first. Then it ventured into another area where it again tried to target a different segment. So once I'm traveling, I don't need Uber Eats. But why, when I'm uh, sitting at home, I want some food. Then I might be a fit for that product uh, segment uh, of, of Uber, by Uber, right? So that is that is how they scale, and uh, that is how they, they uh, perfected their, their uh, fitment, product fitment, and then they ventured into, into uh, another area, which I'm not sure how much, how well they, it worked, but then again, it's, it's all subjective, right? All right, uh, going ahead. So, uh, which I just said, so this is a summary of the last slide, basically, and I, I, I think I've stolen this slide from, uh, from uh, yes, this uh, slide has been taken from Mo Ali, uh, who is the CEO of Product uh, Faculty, which who teach uh, product management courses, and uh, this, is, uh, this is a brilliant slide that I found, and <clears throat> that product market fit, in one line, is a product that can satisfy a specific market, which we just saw maybe a couple of slides earlier as well, and it could be big or small, so just as Uber, Uber, did a product fitment for one category of, uh, of, of customers, then tried their hands on another category, and maybe it's subjective, I don't know if they've done a PMF uh, analysis or not, but, but that is how they tried fitting their product into different categories. So the first category was pretty big, the second uh, category was definitely smaller than the first uh, category. So this, this varies. We have also tried a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, different customer segments, uh, everyone does, right? Instagram does. Instagram was not stories at first, but then it tried uh, creating the stories part to fit a particular pro market segment, uh, which is which is of that teenage and 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 further uh, age of population uh, who are so much uh, into video making and all, right? And on the other hand, a great market, which is different from uh, having a market for uh, the PMN, a great market is a giant market with an unmet need that any entrepreneur can satisfy. And that is where entrepreneurship comes in. You get into entrepreneurship maybe uh, because somewhere down the line you have found a market, not a problem, but a market where there are people, a market where this problem is, is, uh, is there, is present, and you would want to solve it. So you don't start from the problem, maybe you start from a market. Or other way down, it's pretty subjective for every entrepreneur. And uh, so that's the definition of a great market. And both of these are very necessary for, uh, for, for getting ahead into uh, achieving a PMF. Because ultimate goal is not to just achieve PMF, right? It's, it's to, uh, to enable yourself to grow, to gain more revenues, to open more revenue models. Like when we started World, we had a couple of revenue models. We added some uh, a new revenue model just maybe a couple of months back. This is, uh, this is uh, like, like uh, an ever-changing and ever uh, a process that always uh, adds, right? So that is what, what a great market and a broad market fit, uh, how they differ, right? Okay, uh, any questions till now? Because after this, we'll, we'll just take a look at uh, uh, calculating PMF directly. I don't know how much time I have. Okay, 9.30. Any questions uh, in the chat, if there is? Uh, good evening, sir. Yes. Uh, yes, so this is Sapika Agarwal. Yes. Actually, I was just going through your profile and today you're really godsend because I have some question, one, just one question regarding yes, this cryptocurrency thing. Okay, so, uh, all right. So wouldn't that be a bit, uh, okay, please go ahead. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll take it up at the end, but uh, please, please tell me the okay. question. Should I tell it then or should I tell it now? Uh, yeah, please tell the question. If, if it's unrelated, uh, then I'll, I'll prefer taking it at the end, just, just a preference, so that other, others don't. Okay, yeah. okay, 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 yes. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, I've been digging up a lot, and then just one day I typed this uh, one Bitcoin, 
which is somehow equivalent to eight lakh fifty five thousand. Yeah, nine and a half thousand dollars right uh, now as of today. today. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I could not connect that. How come one bitcoin is equal to that much huge amount of Indian currency? That is so. Yeah, the, the entire world happens. is still. Uh, the entire world is. If still, it's irrelevant, yeah. then we'll yeah. So just... yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. Honestly, uh, it's a, it's a very good question and. Uh, so uh, it's it's not a not a just a speculation answer to that, and I would love to answer this question uh, uh, in in proper depth. <laughs> please death. please but, do that. It's yeah. been but, okay, this, but, yeah, of course, let's, been eating up my head. Yeah yeah, let's take it up at the end because it's not related to product market share. Surely, so and surely, also we have yes. tomorrow, but okay. we'll we'll take it tonight. Thank you, week, right? thank you. All right, but a good question. I'll I'll like to go depth uh, deep into that. All right. So if any other thank questions you. in PMF, then we can take it up right now. Otherwise, we'll just continue with calculating PMF. Uh, okay. If there is, just just put it on the chat. Okay, going ahead. <coughs> so, uh, all right. Okay, so this is uh, definitely a, a very important slide because you get to see how we calculate PMF. And uh, as I said, this might not if if some uh, if someone is is uh, uh, in in manufacturing or or in a very different sector, not that web based. Clearly, this this mark of forty percent will not be very meaningful, and it will be very very subjective. That is what I believe. Uh, that's that's not what who coined the term uh, product market fit or uh, Mark Anderson have spoken ever. But then it, it has to be subjective, right? Uh, as as I explained. So how do we calculate PMF? There is one very important question. Just ask your users, the, the users that you have in your system already. So that is why PMF you cannot calculate on day one or day zero of your business. That is very important because <clears throat> for calculating PMF, you have to have some amount of users uh, in your system, right? And, and that should at least be above 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, anything. The bigger, the merrier. And uh, in, in case of B2C, in case of uh, B2B, you won't have 100 customers uh, so soon. So maybe five, six, seven customers, three, four customers, maybe maybe a couple of banks like we are waiting for. Uh, we, we after after maybe getting uh, getting in industry bank, maybe I might decide to uh, calculate PMF for for my product, right? So uh, this is uh, so yeah. Uh, so so that is that is what how you calculate uh, PMF. You just ask your users whichever segment you have. If from this day from this date if i ceased uh, to exist as a product if my product ceased to exist uh, from your lives uh, starting today how much disappointment will you feel uh, by not having it right there are essentially three categories some people will be one category of people would be who are very very disappointed some were uh, some are somewhat disappointed okay that's fine you're not there and then there would be a, a big, big category, to be very honest, because if that category is not big, then you have already achieved PMF. Uh, you're, you're doing this uh, exercise possibly late, uh, quite late, right? You, you missed that time, you should have done this earlier and uh, achieved PMF earlier, right? So it's a big population which falls into this category who say, I don't care. I really don't care. If you cease to exist from tonight, I'll, I'll use uh, some other product because I've already used that product and I like that product. And all of those reasons, I don't need you. Uh, if you're there, maybe I'll use a couple of uh, times, I'll use you, otherwise I, it's fine. So that is a very uh, major problem for you. And uh, a very small people will be there who are falling into this category of very disappointed. People who would be very disappointed if you cease to exist from their lives. So, and, and Sean Ellis, uh, who has led the growth uh, strategies at uh, a billion dollars, dollar startups such as Dropbox, LogMeIn, Eventbrite, all of these companies you must have heard of, and who actually coined the term growth hacker. And since then, a lot of companies have opened this position and they are hiring growth hackers particularly. So Sean Ellis calculated it and he said that, okay, PMF via this formula, the sweet spot usually lies around 40%. Once more than 40% of people say that, okay, 40% or more people are, uh, are, the, are the ones who are going to be very disappointed. You have achieved your PMF. 40% population of your market segment that you're targeting or the customer base that you have, I'm sorry. If 40% or more people say that they will miss you, they have a need for you in their lives, you have achieved PMF because that is a big number because this is the part which is usually the smallest for, 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 for almost uh, people across all industries, right? So. All right, so that's that's where it is. Uh, that's how you calculate PMF. And uh, okay, uh, so going ahead, we'll take a look at a use case. This use case is of an email client, which is superhuman. Maybe some of you have heard of it. And uh, so, and honestly, this is uh, 
this is a very limited uh, edition product kind of a thing you can say and they spent rahul vora the ceo and and the team spent humongous hours and days and months uh, and and you can say years on 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 building the perfect product and they were still not ready to uh, launch this product into the market right so uh, so again uh, we will check what what actually happened and we'll we'll cover this entire product market fit calculation journey uh, using using this uh, particular use case the case study so uh, the initial problem that rahul vora the superman's uh, ceo uh, faced was that uh, it was over a year they were building a product and and rahul vora was a fairly successful uh, entrepreneur even then back in 2017 i guess when when uh, superhuman uh, they started building superhuman and it was still over a year and he was unsure that uh, how like have i have i arrived at product uh, market fit have i have i uh, do i have a product which people actually want how to perfect it more to at least match a particular market segment and all of those questions uh, led up to a year and they still had not launched even a beta version of the product right then is when uh, vora understood that he has to ask that big question to uh, whoever the, the customer base they had right uh, uh, and it was a very small it is still it is still even till this day this date superhuman is an even client which is invite only it is pricey it is it is pretty pricey i used superhuman to be very honest i used superhuman for a month it was somewhere around 2900 i guess per month and i was not ready to uh, spend 2900 a month on email uh, when i'm getting gmail for free and that's that's for lifetime right so uh, it's still an invite only uh, platform <clears throat> however that time back in 2017 18 Vora asked that uh, this question, the PMF question, which we just saw that this is this is what you have to ask your users. How would you feel to the to the to the customer base they had at that time? Not a not a very big customer base because uh, first pricey, then invite only. You really don't get a get a get a great influx of customers in such a case. So how would you feel if you could no longer use Superhuman for the very next day? And uh, this is how he arrived at a position where he built going on. He built features based on that product market fitment uh understanding that he developed by just asking this one question this is how we find product market fit so after that he just went ahead and he optimized for the right audience how did he find the right audience he segmented he integrated and he he, he integrated the feedback and he re-innovated on the features that were already there in the superhuman or added new features and uh, the base that was that was uh, uh, very disappointed it was earlier 22 percent after doing this, definitely it increased. That's why we are covering this as a case study. And so, so that is how he achieved uh, some market uh, validation after achieving PMF by asking this one question. And that is all that's important, to be very honest. All right. So step one, we'll see what Superhuman actually did. So yeah, that was early 2017, as you can see. So after asking this question, uh, they were pretty, uh, the, the users answered, the users replied, whoever, whoever replied, whichever, whatever small user base they had. <clears throat> and uh, they arrived at a, at, a, at a pie which looked like this. So 22% were a part of uh, still a good number, I would say. Uh, but yeah, they had actually uh, spent a lot of time to reach even reach there. So 22% were a part of um, uh, this, uh, this segment, the most important segment who were very disappointed, who would have been very disappointed if had they had, had superhuman ceased to exist from the very next day. The larger segment, <clears throat> which is also very important is 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 like uh, somewhat disappointed people who are on the borderline so so uh, this is this is usually where most of your uh, people would be because uh, to be honest uh, uh, people don't really if you even if you ask this question if they don't need you in their lives they wouldn't just uh, tell it to you on face because obviously they have been using your product so they would typically be on the borderline. So this this entire is the borderline of between uh, these other two categories, and then the other category, which is uh, also fairly important, which is not disappointed. So this is this is something you uh, can do about definitely, but it comes last in your priority list in your in your in your to do, uh, because converting them is the hardest part, is the most difficult part, right? Of of whatever innovations you are planning. So uh, <clears throat> so this is the pie that they got. They understood that very disappointed people were 22% of the customer base and uh, not disappointed but 26%. All right, so this is, this is how they segmented and uh, they got the different categories in order. So let's see, let's take a look at what the categories looked like because you have to have, before going to step two, I would like to share that you have to have uh, a mapping 
of the kinds of customers that all these categories have i mean otherwise there is no reason all right so so even even though i did not cover it on this slide i should have written a note here that before you ask product uh, this question about about uh, the disappointment that someone would have in your customer base uh, if you cease to exist you have to understand that you should have mapped the category of users uh, in your user base right if you don't know your users if you don't have a profile built for your users there is no reason you would ask this question because once they reply and you if you just have the names and maybe their age and and not a lot of detail uh, you will not be able to do anything because for building the most important maybe i'll have a i, I don't know if i have a slide on that or not but uh, a very important part of building after you uh, get these data get these sets of data a very important part of building features to to achieve product market fitment is to understand who the user is to write down the stories user stories which match to map with one of one of these user uh, types and then you build the features so you have to understand what uh, the kinds of users look like <clears throat> so that's what superhuman did they narrowed it to a one is to one relationship between product features and exact customer type who is so someone can be a founder manager executive bd sales uh, then it's customer success uh, someone could be a tech guy then someone could be a uh, a data scientist a marketing guy all of these kinds of people must have been using <coughs> uh, superhuman right but you have to understand and and, and the same kind of uh, users might fall into different categories so that's fine maybe maybe if two different categories for example the most disappointed people and the somewhat disappointed people who are on the borderline so if there is a category like founder i can see that the founder category here is present uh, in 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 uh, the borderline as well as the very disappointed category so now if going forward i map features to the founder category what founders will use maybe not only will i give a very good experience to the founders who are already in the most disappointed category but also in this measure in, in, in while doing this process i'll be able to easily convert the founders who are on the boundary line they are on the boundary line for the for, for a reason they are the most easily convertible uh, unlike unlike the ones who are just not disappointed because maybe those founders who are in the non disappointed not disappointed category they may be having an alternative you have to figure that out right <clears throat> but that's a different story completely out of scope so that is what they did they mapped the product uh, and the customer type uh, the product features and the customer type and they narrowed it down is into a one is to one relationship that what is it that a founder needs what is it that a manager needs a bd guy needs or a, or a sales representative needs or an executive needs so that is that is what they did and okay before going to the result uh, please uh, any questions please till now okay i uh, oh, okay i see a lot of uh, part please give my uh, sir since pmf should not be calculated at day 0 then how i should start thinking finalizing that this is the market for my product so uh, pavan uh, mr pavan you have uh, a very good question <clears throat> that if, uh, if 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 you cannot calculate pmf at day 0 uh, how you would start thinking or or finalizing your product maybe or your business idea your venture idea and that this is the right market for my product so uh, to be very honest from personal experience not i have not read this in in any book of course from personal experience your gut feeling number one i don't know if you will find this in any any book not definitely not in a textbook but maybe business uh, novels and all you might find this uh, simply if you are first you first you do not uh, see uh, let me try to answer this as deeply as possible you first don't find the 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 exact fit that maybe ki okay ye ek market hai and mere paas ek product hai uh, idea hai main map karta hu what you essentially do is you first are in a sector you know a sector you first know the problems see there was one where where every other teenager uh, let me see if i can give an example on the fly there was a time when facebook was very popular and it had uh, come out recently and okay i remember then uh, this movie came out the social network uh, pr pretty brilliant movie i would say won lots of awards what the social network <coughs> encouraged uh, teenagers to do is open startups and i don't know if it uh, maybe uh, may have uh, encouraged me as well because maybe it was somewhere around that time or maybe 3 4 years later only but uh, something leads to something and people used to launch a lot of lot of products and trying to to achieve uh, a lot of things lot of lot of uh, uh, ventures and and startups and organizations or ngos something like that but they have to do something out of out of uh, the ordinary right so what what they started doing is that mark zuckerberg created a social network i saw social network the movie i will create a social network because it is going to run 
they did not identify the problems. That is where the problem lies in itself. So the first thing that you do is you know of some problem. For example, my co-founder, when he, when he thought of uh, World, uh, which is the startup, uh, which is my startup, he was not thinking about building a platform for that would facilitate loans between farmers and banks, right? What he was is that he arrived at a position where he saw, okay, so, and, and you know how these, these things come? So <clears throat> he was going through general articles. You read, read every day. You read Economic Times every day, right? You read the Hindu every day, and you come across so many things. Believe me, a news piece that you read today morning, it could be a startup idea for someone else, right? Of course, because a newspaper, these days news and newspapers and all of those in shorts and everything, they are big playgrounds to come up uh, to you with, uh, with, with a, a multitude of uh, problems that are existing in the country, in the world, in, in maybe Antarctica, anywhere, right? In the, in the world. So they, they share a lot of problems with you. So that is what happened. Either you are in a segment, so I know that a lot of you might be in, uh, veterans in some of these fields, uh, like manufacturing, pharmacy, like someone might be a doctor and all of that. So you must have, uh, so someone who is a doctor might have first faced, uh, faced the problems uh, like uh, of, of appointments get cancelled and and uh, maybe a booking appointments on coming to the clinic or calling the clinic to book appointments and then uh, maybe automating the, the prescription process then the the uh, uh, not the customer what do we call it sorry patient <laughs> I'm sorry the patient coming in the next time forgetting the prescriptions so all of these problems must have been faced by a doctor right then that doctor must have known that okay i should do something about it and maybe then some i don't know the story but uh, maybe then some solutions like practo and, and and all of these solutions came out right so you understood a new uh, <coughs> uh, 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 an area the problems associated with it my co-founder just went across some warehouse receipt frauds that happened and and crores and crores went into it every year nsel scam 5600 crores uh, Qingdao scandal in China 2013 it was around uh, a huge scandal it was around I think three billion dollars right so uh, and, and, and big names Citibank Standard Chartered so you know that there is a market if Citibank if Indusind Bank if Standard Chartered the, they are facing a problem such such grave in nature there is a market right and these banks will be more inclined to pay an implementation fee or or pay a transaction fee to a platform rather than lose three billion dollars and, and and lose face uh, after facing a fraud like that right so that is how you understand that there is a market then you build a product that is what we did i believe that we have uh, achieved somewhat of a product market fit but then again it's a continuous process you never know and uh, that is how you come around uh, fitting a product into a market and uh, building that product but so all right uh, let me let me see if I can arrive at that slide uh, just quickly <clears throat> give me a moment yeah so this slide says yeah <clears throat> this slide even though what you think it is and it is it is it is not correct which I said that it is not what it actually is however it still says that it is an MVP that addresses a problem or need that exists to arrive even at that position you have to have an MVP and believe me, I have started a, I've done a startup where I did not build an MVP. I have done a startup where I've, where, where we have spent uh, quite a few lakhs and, and built an MVP uh, by spending on team and hiring and all. Uh, getting an MVP, even how bad it works, and then someone, I think LinkedIn or someone uh, has very, very famously said, I should know the name, but I'm forgetting it. Uh, someone has said it, that if you're not ashamed, I think, I think Reid Hoffman, LinkedIn's Reid Hoffman has said it, that uh, if you're not ashamed by the first version of your product, you are way too late. If your MVP is like spick and span, you are way too late because then it means that you have spent a lot of resources in perfecting something which you don't know will work in the market. And this is grave in nature. This is very serious in nature because if, if, if you really uh, don't know whether, whether your product is something that the customer needs or is there a customer available in the market who will need your product, why spend so much on it? That is what an MVP is. That is, that is what we, we do all time, right? What, what product managers do all time. So, <clears throat> so that is how you first map uh, problems to MVPs. You build MVP based on problems and then you try to achieve, you gain some customers based on that MVP and then you try to achieve PMF, not first, right? So uh, Mr. Pavan, uh, Pavanji, have I uh, been able to answer your question? If there is any other follow on question, okay, thanks a lot. Thank you for the confirmation. Okay, next question I'll take. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, 9.53, uh, we'll try to wrap up quickly. Um, 
Sir, in initial phase of startup, when there is no significant base of customer for for product, in such case, how to interpret the PMA PMA for? Okay, I think uh, Mr. Satya Prakash, uh, your question is a bit related to what uh, Pavanji had asked. So uh, I would like to skip that uh, maybe for tonight. Uh, so basically, uh, you're not doing it at, at that time because if you don't have a significant customer base, I'm sorry, you will not be able to gauge. Uh, so okay, so this this is your answer. This is would be your answer. I would believe that. Uh, uh, okay, thank you. But still, I'll, I'll give one line that uh, if you are not having a good enough customer base, there is uh, no use of of calculating PMA because obviously, if you have five customers. And you ask uh, uh, what would happen, and, and th those are your friends and family. If you ask that, what would happen if I if I drop down the company, you'll get hundred percent as very disappointed, right? That's not the right measure. I mean, you'll be happy, and you'll think that okay, I should spend one million dollars on on just building the product because. Uh, experts say that uh, Mark Anderson says that 40% is a good number. I got 100%. Does not make sense, right? So, you, so that is why I don't know. I should have kept a slide here, but uh, that's what I said. I missed on it. I'm sorry. You should have a good enough customer base. If it's B2B, have five, six, seven customers. If it's B2C, have at least 100, 200, 300 customers. Jiska 40% meaningful ho, thoda. Jiska 40%, 30%, 20%, thoda meaningful ho. So that is that is I believe where where your 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 uh, point should be. Uh, what is the importance of pricing in PMF? Yes. Or does PMF help in price discovery? Yes, PMF helps in price discovery to some extent. Why? Because a lot of people have even hacked PMF, the strategy of PMF. Very good question. I am loving this question. So people have tried hacking this PMF process, the strategy, by asking users. I'm giving you this item, one option, and, and they have built an entire MVP. Okay, I, I, I'll give a very, I maybe I think this is the last thing we'll do tonight. I don't know if I'm ready to continue, I'll do it. So uh, just take an example, uh, Mr. Prashinjit. So let's take an example. Um, if you, if people have built uh, products, MVPs, where they have uh, used a beta testing, simple plain beta testing, what they have done is, they have segregated uh, their entire customer base, say, as for example, 100 people into three different sets. To one set, whenever you're logging into a website, you will only get to see uh, 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 yeah, the product and when you try to pay for the product you will be paying rupees 5 for the product the other segment who is unaware of the fact that there exists two so that is what beta testing is right a lot of you would be knowing so the second category will not know that a and c categories exist that are rupees 5 and another category exists so this category category b will be saying uh, will be seeing the same item for rupees 45 another category c will be seeing it for 90 a percentage calculation after the duration so that is why even google even google optimize 360 uh, is a great tool to do that uh, i've seen people do that i've done somewhat uh, something with google 360 uh, optimize 360 is an amazing tool so you'll believe so that's why google also uh, suggests that you at least run up an ab test uh, with a and this is particularly a multivariate AV test uh, for at least a couple of weeks to get the perfect data which which google thinks it can suggest you a winner so people you'll understand that the conversions you have a simple metric of conversion buy out uh, add to cart or, or or pay for it right simple one click conversion method right and you'll get to understand after two weeks that a percentage calculation out of the hundred or thousand people what is a greater percentage of people who went for a particular type of price point perfect example to discover your price and and if, if maybe 50 percent of the uh, category c actually bought it Whereas uh, maybe, and people have found, believe me, uh, Mr. Prashenjit, believe me, people have found uh, very contradicting results. You will think that if you buy 5 rupees, you will buy 100% of it. They don't know that the same product, the same feature, the same uh, process is uh, available in 90 rupees. They will buy that 5 rupees. They don't know. And people have seen that in many places, that people have not bought uh, the rupees 5 example because maybe you were providing something which was too good to be true for rupees 5. So then automatically, we Indians specifically, what we think is, this is good. So people have not bought it. Jabki the same thing, people have paid 90 rupees or 45 rupees. More people have done that. I mean, so 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 funny it is, right? So that would be an answer uh, to the question. That is how you attain, attain price discovery even with a very limited set of customers while doing PMF, while achieving at PMF. Uh, please let me know, uh, Mr. Prashinjit, if I've, I've answered your question. Uh, does having, all right, thank you so much. Okay, was there a question I left? Okay. Does having the right PMF signify success for the startup? WhatsApp didn't do anything which wasn't done before. Exactly, same goes for Uber. The need was being, uh, okay. 
the need was being satisfied by multiple products before so what's the real significance of pmf what i will do is uh, mr sanjeev uh, ji i'll what i'll do is i'll uh, i don't even need to copy this question this is such a brilliant question i'll have it and on the very first slide i told you there's something called product zeitgeist fit that is something i would love to cover we have uh, run out of time today but uh, that is there i mean i mean uh, i'll just quickly go to it i'll reach that slide and i'll just show you exactly this example we'll take it tomorrow maybe this is just a teaser what what we have and your example you can see uber is here on this and and this is where we are trying to discuss um, product side guys fit so so i will take this question tomorrow and actually uh, pzf is going to be an answer to a question whatsapp didn't do anything new uber didn't do anything new why they succeeded why airbnb succeeded why uh, why something like uh, chewy succeeded chewy is dog food right uh, i saw this example somewhere these have been tried previously as well right but they succeeded oyo succeeded um, uh, so a lot of these uh, things have succeeded uh, at a time i would like to go uh, on it on it on it next time when we are doing uh, pizza dev because this is an exact uh, answer for pizza dev uh, so uh, is it is it fine uh, sanjeev ji is it fine if i uh, take it when the right uh, topic is is coming thank you so much so okay i don't see any other question uh, it's 9:59 so uh, if if you give me a couple of more minutes i'll take uh, miss deepika's question and i'll just quickly if you're interested please stay 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 here uh, to listen to that bitcoin answer if you're not uh, please please leave or i don't know how the, what the next process is uh, but maybe we'll continue tomorrow so about tomorrow before you leave uh, about tomorrow uh, what 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 we have planned for tomorrow is that uh, so uh, safal sir had specifically asked that uh, since i've i've done three different startups and i, I did, did did my first startup when i was in my third year of college and it was uh, believe me it was it was fairly successful as well and if you would have continued it was on the lines of inshorts and scoop poop and all and and we had a lot of people we had 37 people while we were already full time students at a college so it was running well we had an investment we had raised an investment from the same investors who have invested in jugnu uh, the, the 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 auto auto company auto sharing company if you if you heard about jugnu pretty prevalent in in delhi gurgaon area right so uh, it was going well so uh, prof safal sir had asked me to answer some of the entrepreneurial questions which which maybe you have been asking him as well so i'll try to do that tomorrow i'll try to discuss what we have done in world till now and we have arrived at some product market fit i would believe again i am the product owner so i would love to believe that i am a co-founder i would love to believe that but uh, maybe industry will tell me something different and then we'll we'll, we'll cover the rest of this uh, the, the uh, product side guys and a couple of use case we'll complete the uh, we'll we'll complete the superhuman use case where i'll show how from where they went from 22% to where did they ultimately go so we'll take it uh, tomorrow if that's fine right so <clears throat> so uh, uh, i'll take just i'll take uh, miss deepika's question if if that is fine all right so uh, yeah miss deepika are you are, are you online yes sir yeah, yes perfect. sir yes sir all right so so please please just yeah please just stay back everyone for 2 minutes it will be done so uh, you you asked a question about bitcoin yes sir so like how it how yeah. it's like one bitcoin equals to 8 lakh 55000 so it's something. it's 8 lakh today like how right. it got it's it's yeah. 8 lakh today do you know do you happen to know the price point at which it was uh, december 2017 do you have an idea about that 11 lakh mm. Uh, yes, further than that, I would say. I mean, I think, I think, I think higher than that, right? I don't remember the Indian rupees count, but it was, it was almost reaching nineteen thousand dollars, right? I don't know, uh, you can convert it, right? At that time, at that price point, it was not a COVID time and all. Uh, it was, it was pretty high, nineteen thousand dollars. Right now, it is half of that. I think, I think yesterday only it crossed ten thousand or eleven thousand dollars again, even in COVID, uh, Bitcoin. Yeah. So uh, at that time, it was, it was nineteen thousand dollars, and that was the peak that uh, it arrived at. So what happens is. um to be very honest uh, when we are discussing product zeitgeist trade i would might take an example i don't have a slide on it i would take an example of this cryptocurrency came at a time when the time was ripe and that is what product zeitgeist is all about so i'm giving some hints we'll try to cover it tomorrow in detail so uh, cryptocurrency at in 2009 it was it was a time when uh, okay a very good example is is hidden inside bitcoin itself when did crypto come crypto came satoshi nakamoto came uh, at a time when uh, yeah, yeah 2008 i right? guess yes yes right. absolutely 2008 he wrote the white paper right yes uh, sir and and blockchain is something so i i love talking about blockchain my field is blockchain so uh, blockchain is something uh, people believe that so did you hear about blockchain uh, before that before 2008 yes did yes sir, i mean i have been yes sir i 
I've, since this Bitcoin got introduced like three, four years back when I read, read this article, old. I kept That's digging old. into this. But like not before 2008. The dots that uh, how the yeah. money is getting is equivalent to this yeah. a currency. Yeah. Like earlier it was illegal. Then how can they evaluate one so, what, Bitcoin what, equivalent uh, to no, these no. many when dollars it, or Indian rupees? When was it illegal? Like it was, it was not considered legal by many countries, even if it, even if Bitcoin was introduced. Right. So, uh, okay, I would not be able to comment on other countries, but uh, what RBI did in between, which a lot of people in India take that uh, uh, RBI said that cryptocurrencies is illegal. Uh, I'll tell you something that what happened actually. So I'll, I'll, I'll cover the other question deeply right after it. So what happened in 2018 is that RBI came out with an order which just prohibited financial yes. institutions in dealing with companies, corporates and startups who are dealing in cryptocurrencies. They, RBI asked that because I govern you all as financial institutions, you are a, uh, a bank, I govern you, 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 I make policies for you. So I prohibit you in giving your banking services to startups who are dealing in cryptocurrencies. That is what stopped. What happened is, I don't know how much courts understand. So I'll be, I'll, I'll share a very uh, deep, like very personal anecdote. I was in a company at that time, a startup at that time, which shut down because of this RBI's problems only. RBI is not RBI's problems, but RBI created a lot of problems in the industry. And what happens is there's a huge disconnect between, so Archit Ji, Coinex, and also another startup. I was not in Coinex, but uh, to be honest, the founder of Coinex and the founder of my company, uh, both of them were in, uh, were, 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 uh, implicated at the same time and they were uh, they were at the same time yes so won't go a lot into that i don't know how much i'm uh, ready to speak so uh, so exactly at that time so what happened what happens is when these orders come out people take it very differently even government who's taking out the order who's, who's kind of taking out the order who know, should know about the order they take it differently courts know nothing about it now bitcoin cases bitcoin and, and crypto cases were being handled by judges who were who were above 70 years of age i mean it's it's, it's okay a personal anecdote is that but just back in june five six seven three days i was i was teaching a faculty development program to 700 faculties across the world right a lot of faculties joined in and and they were phds or faculties at the minimum even they took a lot of time to be very honest to understand bitcoin because it is it is unlike the computer science concepts that people have heard and learned about since their life even i i, I i'm a computer science graduate right but uh, even in my engineering i did not reach learn such concepts bit crypto blockchain is pretty different right so how can we assume that judges court judges who are uh, 70 years of age will be in a capacity to understand a complex technology like blockchain right but but of course the the uh, the verdicts were given by such people uh, such judges and it it created a havoc in the country and at that time a lot of people went in and a lot of things happened but rbi had not banned cryptocurrency they just pro rbi just prohibited its own financial institutions to not deal with the startups who are dealing in cryptocurrency so first of all that is what was happened crypto was never illegal in the country also just back in i think 4th may this year 4th may uh, is when uh, supreme court gave the order to rbi that this does not make sense and uh, this should be lifted the ban was again lifted and zeppe and all you can see have again occurred into the picture and and uh, again trading has begun you can trade and do a lot of things right so what happens is that okay so that is that is what the story was and it was never illegal in the country even though a lot of people believe that but uh, and going back to your question original question this came at a time when uh, the people were losing uh, trust in the wall street it's a okay. very important it was a very important time at that time 2007 8 9 right 2008 yes, actually sir. during the recession right so uh, yes. the great recession so people lost number one so that is what formed the zeitgeist we'll see tomorrow what zeitgeist is and and and, and just this this photo you're seeing we'll see the next photo which makes a lot more sense right so uh, what what made sense at that time was to not trust uh, wall street i mean not trust banking institutions at that time uh, and actually the government had rejected the bailout for for banks right so and that is why so see and and how do we know that uh, this is a concept maybe that was before uh, based on which the bitcoin and all such cryptocurrencies were brought in satoshi nakamoto in its in the first block in the bitcoin blockchain has uh, many of you might be knowing it by now if if you're interested so <clears throat> it has it has written in the first block that uh, a note he has left satoshi nakamoto has left a note that chancellor on the breakout of, of, of on the breakout of bailing out banks right something like that so uh, this shows that at that time this was an issue 
So it, it could be two reasons that Satoshi left that uh, message. Number one, this was the exact heading on a, on, a, on a, I think I think Times or, or some newspaper, popular newspaper from that uh, that time that day. Or it could be because this was the philosophy based on which this this new form of internet money came. And see, internet money was existing since before. So this is the same. Uh, this is the exact same example as Mr. Sanjeev asked that WhatsApp jaisi cheeze bhi pehle thi, Uber jaisi cheeze bhi pehle thi. Abhi kyu chali WhatsApp? Kyu 19 billion dollar mein abhi bika? WhatsApp. customers But why not any other company who have cracked this idea that WhatsApp has done before, even before WhatsApp did? Facebook is itself an example. MySpace was there, right? MySpace was pretty successful. What happened? Of course, right. MySpace, right? Right. So, so that is what the uh, thing is. So, crypto came at a time. Bitcoin and other currencies came at a time. Even though internet money was there since before crypto came at a time at, at a very ripe time right and it, it got a push but still things take time to uh, to to flourish and uh, it also took but to be honest blockchain if if you're saying that blockchain took uh, 11 years that's that's a decade hardly right whereas other technologies like ai ai i think john mccarthy or someone was that i'm forgetting the name who, who coined the term artificial intelligence back in 1950s and even till now, you are hardly seeing any AI applications. You are seeing some basic AI applications, right? So it, it has taken decades and decades. So it was pretty, pretty, pretty recent for something like uh, cryptocurrencies and blockchain to come up to mainstream adoption. And and and, and to be very honest, uh, World Bank has called blockchain technology as a pillar of the fourth industrial revolution, comparing it with. Uh, steam engine and internet. I mean, these are very big comparisons. I mean, these you can understand how much uh, steam engine and internet have changed our lives, right? Uh, but even they have taken decades to do so. So, uh, so that is where. Uh, so, okay. So, coming down to the point here is that Bitcoin came at a time when it was very good. It took some time to came into mainstream uh, come into mainstream adoption. Then what happened during 2016-17 is that suddenly what happens, speculation grew, right? And people started coming up with a lot of new forms of blockchain uh, systems, like Ethereum came. What Ethereum did was, Ethereum has the concept of a world computer. What it does is, it's not only a uh, currency uh, like Bitcoin, it also lets you run smart contracts. So it opens the world of, uh, what do you call it? It opens the world of uh, uh, smart contracts and decentralized applications on top of it. That's the second generation of blockchain. Sir, and I'm I, sorry, what did you just say? Which, which, Ethereum, what, do you know about came? Ethereum? Ethereum? I mean, it's, it's, Ethereum, it has a second okay. market cap. Yeah, yeah, after Bitcoin, if you open coin market cap, you'll see. So it has okay. right after Bitcoin, Ethereum comes, right? So, okay, okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so that's 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 how essentially uh, it is. Uh, Ethereum and Ethereum is a second generation blockchain. Bitcoin was just a currency. Ethereum brought out a lot more, and that was the time when a, a concept of fundraising called uh, like, like like we raise funds against equity from venture capitalists, a concept called in, uh, initial coin offering came out, and then people uh, then the, the entire industry went gaga about this thing that okay even without building a product people were able to raise millions of uh, amounts i mean i mean if you just see if i if i, if I, if I just go back to uh, the slide see i was a part of a, a company which did nothing more than provide an esports platform okay and if you can see just a second let me let me just show you the number uh, you'll understand check out this number it's 5.8 million euros that uh, that that uh, uh, this this company esports.com raised even when we were building this platform, this was a Germany-based company, and even we were building this platform. And and to be honest, ये कुछ खास अलग है नहीं. आपने Web 365 देखा होगा, आपने esports की और websites देखी होंगी. बिल्कुल वैसा ही है. But it was able to raise 5.8 million euros without giving any amount of equity, without giving any any kind of uh, uh, like 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 uh, debt money, any taking any kind of debt uh, funding, convertibles, nothing. Initial coin offering was popular at that time and because people wanted invest in it, they thought that they are owning a new piece of internet and then comes FOMO, fear of missing out. Everyone has a fear of missing out and this is reproduced in so many stages that people are like, uh, I'm missing out, right? And people start putting more and more money. Right now, the same time, okay, so uh, Ms. Deepika, just uh, make a note of it. Right now, the same time has come for decentralized finance, search for it, DeFi. DeFi, okay. Yeah, DeFi. First, okay. it CeFi, which is centralized finance, which we all do, right? Trading, which is centralized finance, right? Yes, so, okay. so, so DeFi is, abhi, within a month and a half or so, the Ethereum network has seen from $1 billion in decentralized finance transactions to $4 billion 
can you understand can you imagine 4 billion dollars 3 billion dollars addition in over a month and a half or so or even less than that ye wahi scene chal raha hai jo ico ka hua tha us time pe everyone was raising like like we did 5.8 million euros kya amount hai ye i mean staying in india i could understand what such a big amount this was and being on the inside i could understand that maybe agar main same kaam karna chahu abhi apne startup mein world mein 5.8 million euros raise karne mein meri halat kharab ho jayegi we are currently fundraising and we are looking for 2 million dollars after one and a half years of working in this field we have banks as our customers esports had nothing right but that is that is the whole point that was that was what what was happening at that right abhi bhi chal raha hai yeah okay so 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 in in, in nutshell yeah. in nutshell yeah. uh, one bitcoin is equivalent to 8 lakh 50 5000 something just because people invested in it fomo number one was fomo number two was speculation and number three was an instrument a financial investment instrument that came into uh, the market like icos uh, because of which uh, people started investing ab ico hota hai to follow on mein see ico mein aap invest kaise karte ho ya to bitcoin pay karte ho ethereum pay karte ho ya other any other cryptocurrency altcoin which that ico particularly accepts so ab aise right. uh, that that is how you uh, contribute to uh, to all these things right so when you are increasing so, transactions um, okay one more thing okay. no 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 okay miss deepika just cutting you out once a uh, very important concept is that simple economics is simple economics says everything is about demand and supply right right so right. people in bitcoin in the case of bitcoin people know that the smart contract behind bitcoin says that uh, only 21 million bitcoins will always be there in any time right वो जनरेट होता है हर ब्लॉक जनरेट होने पे बिटकॉइन रिलीज होते हैं बिटकॉइन न्यू बिटकॉइन जनरेट होते हैं जो माइनर्स होते हैं दिस इज अ डिफरेंट कॉन्सेप्ट आई टीच एनी वेज इन ब्लॉक चेन क्लासेस पीपल न्यू बिटकॉइन गेस जनरेटेड आउट ऑफ थिन ईयर टू बी ऑनेस्ट बट बट दैट इज हाउ द प्रोग्राम रन बट पीपल नो कि ये लिमिटेड क्वान्टिटी है इक्कीस मिलियन के बाद ये कभी नहीं होगा सो दैट 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 लिमिट इन द सप्लाई इज सेल्फ क्रिएटेड अ ह्यूज डिमांड अगेन वेरी सिंपल इकोनॉमिक्स राइट सो दैट इज वन ऑल्सो वन रीजन वाई पीपल सडनली थॉट कि इक्कीस मिलियन ही तो होंगे राइट दैट इज वाई एनी थिंग इंक्रीज इज इन प्राइस राइट डिमांड बढ़ता है सप्लाई कम हो जाता है तो प्राइस बढ़ता है राइट दैट इज वॉट हैपन विद बिटकॉइन एक्चुअली एंड एंड इवन Yeah. my just last question i'll just yeah. would like to end it up yeah. because i have huge <laughs> set of questions only last yeah, question yeah, yeah. this cryptocurrency will it be taken as a new form of currency or it will be taken as just a financial instrument in future so people like us i've been into this field i built businesses in this field so i uh, i i love building products into this field i am definitely in for uh, i would love that uh, these things start getting accepted so decentralization i am all about decentralization so i would i would want to see decentralization However, on the other hand, uh, uh, and 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 the Miss Deepika, आपने जो question पूछा ना, this is this these kinds of implementations are already happening place, are 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 already happening, right? Are already in place, right? China, even while COVID was on, right? वो शायद COVID से निकले थे. China ran a project. Yeah, China ran a project uh, for uh, central bank digital currency CBDC. Right. 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 Uh, which yes, is which sir. is which is an alternative for their own uh, own currency, own national currency, right? So, uh, no, so their yeah. what they their crypto one crypto their one cryptocurrency will be equivalent to their one yuan. One yuan, yeah, yeah. That getting... is one one is so see there are different kinds of cryptocurrencies. One is Bitcoin and every other cryptocurrency is called altcoin, alt for alternate. ठीक है तो ऑल इज ऑल्टरनेट सो नाउ देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड यूएसडीसी व्हिच इज देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड टेथर टेथर इज अ करेंसी दीज आर स्टेबल कॉइंस एक होता है क्रिप्टो करेंसी एक होता है स्टेबल ऑल्ट कॉइन एक होता है स्टेबल कॉइन स्टेबल कॉइन क्या होता है स्टेबल कॉइन ऐसा स्पेकुलेशन पे नहीं चलता है स्टेबल कॉइन इज ऑल अबाउट पेग्ड टू वन करेंसी अगर यूएस डॉलर से पेग्ड है जैसे यूएसडीसी यूएसडीसी इज पेग्ड टू यूएस डॉलर यूएस डॉलर अगर वन यूएस डॉलर इज वन यूएसडीसी एंड पीपल आर यूजिंग दिस हैवीली इन डिसेंट्रलाइज फाइनेंस सो ये अगर ये कॉन्सेप्ट ही अलग है so that is why that is why that is one one uh, there one cbdc is actually uh, equivalent to one yuan chinese yuan right uh, yes, but sir. but the point is not that the point is that they have as a, as a, as a one of the most populated nations they have started using cryptocurrencies right and what they are doing is they they started with four cities and they started with i think three four brands and i think uh, starbucks mcd they were a part of this this project pilot right i don't know how much successful it was i believe it was successful एंड एंड सो अगर वो पायलट कर रहे हैं आज चार शहरों से वो कल पूरे देश में चलेगा राइट right? एक देश लेगा फिर दूसरा देश लेगा हमारे बीच में यहाँ पे भी अफवाह आई थी कि हर बी आई इज ट्राइंग टू लॉन्च समथिंग और लक्ष्मी एज एन ऑल्टरनेटिव ऑल्ट कॉइन फॉर फॉर इंडियन रुपी दैट वॉज फेक ऑब्वियसली बट सी दीज थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग आई थिंक स्वीडन और सम वन हैज़ ऑल्सो ट्राइड दिस आउट पीपल आर ट्राइंग राइट गवर्नमेंट्स आर ट्राइंग जिस दिन ये देश भी ट्राई करने लगेगा 
वी हैव अ ग्रेट चांस ऑफ हैविंग अ डिजिटल क्रिप्टो करेंसी एंड पीपल आर सेइंग कि अभी कोविड के टाइम पे तो करना ही चाहिए बट ठीक है नहीं पॉसिबल है अभी कोविड से लड़ेंगे कि उससे लड़ेंगे बट इट हैज़ अज फ्यूचर एंड वैन दीज थिंग्स कम इन टू मोर पिक्चर बिटकॉइन एंड बाकी चीज़ों के प्राइस ऑटोमेटिकली बढ़ेंगे बिकॉज नंबर वन अगेन फोमो नंबर टू लिमिटेड सप्लाई एंड नंबर थ्री इन डिसेंट्राइज फाइनेंस के एप्लीकेशन में आपको बिटकॉइन ही यूज करोगे या कोई और ऑप्शन या Like, 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 I didn't still get my answer. Yeah. But like, cryptocurrency as a currency or just a financial instrument? As What a currency. Is it? As a currency. You know, one problem. It, it's, your, your direct so answer. So will be taken as a currency in future. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 that is what they are trying to do, right? See. Because I can see one more Britain Wood agreement happening again in future. Uh, you know, because uh, happening yeah. what? Happening what? There is this Britain Wood agreement where uh-huh. the dollar was. Uh, taken as a trading currency so i okay. can foresee that another britain would kind of maybe. agreement britain would agree maybe, will maybe. take place I'll have to where more on that countries But will be maybe. fighting like which currency will be taken should be taken as no, the no, so 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 that yeah. would be that would be so that is again far off पहले तो ये होगा कि पहले देश अपना अपना करेंसी तो बना ले क्रिप्टो करेंसी ऑल्टरनेटिव करेंसी राइट एंड टू योर क्वेश्चन लेट्स लेट्स क्लोज इट हियर दैट योर डायरेक्ट आंसर टू योर क्वेश्चन एज अ करेंसी और एज अ फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज दैट चाइना तो यही ट्राई कर रहा है ना कि करेंसी की तरह यूज हो राइट नहीं तो वाई वाई इज इट कॉल सेंट्रल बैंक डिजिटल करेंसी सेंट्रल बैंक आर जैसा बैंक जो करेंसी चलाता है उसका एक ऑल्टरनेटिव डिजिटल करेंसी दैट्स ऑल राइट एंड वन इज टू वन पैक्ट एक रुपया एक 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 दैट करेंसी राइट एंड सो वन द ओनली प्रॉब्लम सो सो दिस इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फैक्ट वीजा as a network visa network that you use every day for payments it can yes, it can it can uh, it can process 1736 transactions per second and visa wow, team okay. has yeah and visa team hai aur wo zaruri bhi nahi padta hai roz ka roz 150 million agar kisi din 150 million transaction hote hain jis din hue the visa network pe dek ek din mein 150 million transaction us din ka per second divide karke agar aap dekhoge wo aata hai 1736 transactions wo ek hi din hua tha उतना भी नहीं पहुंचता है बट स्टिल वीजा टीम हैज सेड प्रोमिस्ड कि दे हैव टेस्टेड द नेटवर्क्स टू हैंडल अप टू फिफ्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड ट्रांजेक्शन कहाँ सत्रह सौ की जरूरत नहीं पड़ी छप्पन हजार मतलब अगले दस बीस तीस पचास चालीस साल तक तो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है वीजा को या मास्टर कार्ड को एक ही तो है राइट right? ठीक right, है बट ऑन दी अदर हैंड डू नो वट बिटकॉइंस डू डू हैव एनी आइडिया वट बिटकॉइंस ट्रांजेक्शन थ्रू पुट इज पर सेकेंड एनी आइडिया ब्लैंक आइडिया एक एक तुक्का मारिए एनी वन एल्स ऑल्सो वॉन्ट्स टू गेट समथिंग प्लीज इफ यू नो बेटर इफ नॉट प्लीज राइट इन द चैट आई आई वुड लव टू नो एन एन आइडिया वीजा वन सेवन थ्री सिक्स ट्रांजेक्शन पर सेकेंड टेस्ट हुआ है प्लीज राइट इन द चैट Anyone who can, who can, Miss Deepika, please write in the chat or please tell me any any guess that you have. I just have five hundred because it's any way people are going into it, and <laughs> visa se to half hi hoga. So okay, now that's that's where it lies. I don't know why anyone has. Baki log chhod gaye kya? <laughs> But theek hai. So uh, all right, let's let's close it. This is a signal, Miss Deepika, that we should stop it, right? Okay. okay no. Sir. So someone has written twenty five thousand. Nahi, visa khud seventeen thirty six hai, right? So, so no, it's not. So I ask that what's the throughput of Bitcoin transactions like Visa ka one seven three six? So, Miss Deepika, it's not twenty five thousand. The बहुत ज़्यादा है. It's not even five hundred transactions. It is four point seven transactions per second. Four point seven transactions per second. Can you imagine? Not But, even in hundreds. Not even five. Or or Joby 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 हुआ है. Joby people have still seen that it has achieved seven transactions per second का पहुँचा है. बट सेवन भी हम रेगुलरली नहीं पहुंचते हैं फोर पॉइंट फोर फोर पॉइंट सिक्स ट्रांजेक्शन पर सेकेंड रहता है इथीरियम थोड़ा अच्छा है उसका ब्लॉक टाइम थोड़ा कम है फिफ्टीन सेकेंड्स का ब्लॉक टाइम है नाइनटीन सेकेंड्स का ब्लॉक टाइम है वो पहुंचता है फिफ्टीन ट्रांजेक्शन पर सेकेंड सो कैन यू सी नाउ कैन यू इमेजिन इन रियल लाइफ इन रियल लाइफ सिचुएशन इफ यू आर प्लानिंग टू पे फॉर योर कॉफी यूजिंग बिट कॉइन ना तो आपको पता रहेगा कि कितनी देर में आपको ऑर्डर जाएगा ना स्टारबक्स वाले बंदे को पता रहेगा कि कब आपको कॉफी देना है ऐसा भी हो सकता है कि दस मिनट में चले जाए ऐसा भी हो सकता है चालीस मिनट में चले जाए अगर आपको पता भी रहता कि 40 मिनट में ही होगा तो आप कम से कम ऑर्डर देके 40 मिनट बाद आते बट यहाँ क्या है अनसर्टेंटी है 10, 15, 20, 25, 1 घंटा कुछ भी लग सकता है दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम राइट नाउ एंड पीपल आर ट्राइंग टू सॉल्व इट पीपल आर ट्राइंग टू सॉल्व इट जिस दिन सॉल्व हो जाएगा पीपल आर रियली ट्राइंग टू सॉल्व इट पीपल आर बिल्डिंग ब्यूटिफुल ब्लॉक चेन सोल्यूशन पीपल अलग अलग ब्लॉक चेन सोल्यूशन कर रहे हैं जैसे हम लोग पब्लिक ब्लॉक चेन यूज करते हैं हम लोग परमिशन ब्लॉक चेन यूज करते हैं जे पी मॉर्गन का है कोरम ब्लॉक चेन वो हम यूज करते हैं सो पीपल आर ट्राइंग टू यूज न्यू एंड न्यू टाइप्स ऑफ थिंग्स टू टू अराइव एट दैट पॉइंट ओके वेर वेर बट यू कैन सी राइट यू कैनॉट पे फॉर कॉफी राइट नाउ 
जिस दिन आप पे कर पाओगे उस दिन आप क्यों नहीं यूज़ करोगे इसको एज अ करेंसी सामने right, वाला बंदा right. क्यों नहीं यूज़ करेगा बट सी ना करेंसी के तरह तो यूज़ होता है ना बिटकॉइन आप वेबसाइट पे ऑनलाइन जाइए आप कितनी uh, मतलब अच्छे अच्छे वेबसाइट से जो है स्टार्टेड यूजिंग क्रिप्टो करेंसी एज पेमेंट सिस्टम जिनको जल्दी नहीं है जिनको ऐसा एक सेकेंड के अंदर ट्रांजेक्शन कम्प्लीट नहीं करना है जो भी किया मैंने एक डेढ़ साल से पहले किया तो वो तब था तो अभी तो और दस दस हजार चीज आ गई होंगी अभी लोग छोड़ते थोड़ी है करेंसी की तरह यूज होगा सर दैट इज एन आंसर टू डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन दैट इट विल नॉट जस्ट बी अ फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट इट विल बी अ फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट पीपल आर बिल्डिंग फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट अराउंड क्रिप्टो करेंसीज यू गो टू बिनेंस Binance is the world's leading uh, cryptocurrency exchange, right? It 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 just acquired one of our Indian cryptocurrency exchanges called Wazirx, right? Uh, by Nishant Shetty. Yes, that Wazirx guy, uh, sir, Nishant. wrote an article in the Economic Times where he said now it's yeah. illegal. RBI has made it illegal. So again, made it illegal. तो कभी था ही नहीं, but हाँ, perspective था, right? But yeah, that is what that is what he has done. To be very honest, I mean, uh, he has been acquired by Binance. So go, you, anyways, the topic is you go to Binance and you will see वहाँ पे futures, derivatives, spot. हर चीज कर पा रहे हैं पीपल हैव बिल्ड फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स अराउंड बिटकॉइन ऑलरेडी बट करेंसी का यूज होता है वेट 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 दे आर बिल्डिंग फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स अराउंड क्रिप्टो करेंसी या दे आर डूइंग दैट यस अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव डन दैट इंडिया में पता नहीं कितने लोगों ने किया है बाहर तो आज क्या बाहर 2017 में लोगों ने कर लिया था एनीवेज आई थिंक या थैंक यू सो मच आई मीन आई एम नॉट विलिंग टू एंड दिस टॉपिक बट थैंक यू सो मच ऑफ कोर्स आई 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 टीच दिस टॉपिक राइट सो आई आई कैन गो होल नाइट ऑन दिस आई आई लिव दिस टॉपिक सो ऑफ कोर्स बट ओके देयर आर देयर आर सो मेनी पीपल एंड पीपल हैव स्टार्टेड ड्रॉपिंग सो आई थिंक इट्स अ सिग्नेचर इट्स अ साइन थैंक यू सर ओके थैंक्स लॉट यस सर ओके Uh, any Thank other you so questions much. so so before you before you leave i would like to uh, just leave a, a quick link here i don't know if uh, safal sir is there or not i'll just catch up uh, so i'll just uh, quickly leave a link here it's just a feedback for this particular session i take a look at uh, this is one of the most important slides for me so uh, one of the important uh, things for me that if you if you uh, just uh, maybe maybe uh, do this click on this link and uh, fill this 10 second feedback form maybe tomorrow itself uh, i would i would try to impact some of these changes here i put it in the chat before leaving if you have any other questions please post it maybe we'll take it tomorrow i'll copy and paste it in a note and uh, apart from that i would request that we'll take an anonymous 10 seconds of yours uh, please give this feedback if there is anything slow fast jo bhi hai bad good uh, don't want to give a feedback it's fine but it will be effect uh, in effect tomorrow so i think that's it we have extended the timing i don't know if that's a, that's a, how big a problem that is uh safal sir if you are there or pulkit sir if you are there hello uh, sir aapki awaaz atak rahi hai thanks thanks sir for for all your passionate delivery of the topic i i loved your session thank you so I'm much i'm sure sir. the participants would have equally loved it i i hope i hope that too i mean डेढ़ घंटा बहुत एक्स्ट्रा ले लिया बट टुमारो आई ट्राई टू कम्प्लीट विद इन वन आर थैंक्स थैंक्स अटन अभिषेक हैव अ गुड नाइट गुड नाइट ऑल ऑफ यू एज वेल या थैंक्स अ लॉट थैंक यू सो मच सी यू टुमारो सेम टाइमिंग 9 पीएम वी विल ट्राई टू रैप अप थिंग्स द एक्चुअल थिंग्स फर्स्ट एंड देन वी विल सी व्हाट वी कैन टेक अप एक्स्ट्रा या ऑल राइट थैंक्स अ लॉट थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सर Good night, sir. Good night, good night. Good night. Thanks, sir. See you tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Good night. Yeah. Please, please have any give any feedback if there is any if you want uh, me to take effect tomorrow.